Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're well, and those that celebrate getting into the Christmas spirit. Uh, my kids are like bottles of pop right now, which is really lovely to see, of course. Me, I still have a couple of weddings to shoot over the Christmas period, but I'm looking forward to putting my feet up and seeing what Santa Claus puts in my stock in this year. I don't know about you, but every year Gemma says to me, I don't know what to get you for Christmas. And pretty much I always reply with the same thing, which is anything that needs to be charged or has a plug on it will be fine. I'm a real typical gadget geek in that respect. Normally I end up with some socks and a woolly jumper though, so we'll see what happens this year. Anyway, today I'm going to answer some of the questions I've had about the X-Pro3 in the three months that I've been using it. I'll give you an update on what I feel about the camera and dig into some of your specific questions that came following my review. Uh, quite a lot of them. Okay, so let's get stuck in. All right, so I've been using the X-Pro3 now for around about three or four months, and this video isn't gonna be a review. I've done that already, and I'll link to that above and, and below, of course, as well. Now, what I want to do is give a brief update on my thoughts, but more importantly, answer some of the questions that came in via the review, or on my F16 website, or in fact, via the Fujicast podcast that Neil and I run. By the way, the podcast, I'll link to it above again and below, is going from strength to strength. It's most definitely not just for Fujifilm photographers. And this week we discuss whether wedding photography is dead. Um, hope not. Anyway, go and give it a listen. We get about 5,000 listeners a week now, which is amazing. Um, brilliant, in fact. And, and that's more than Newport County get at home games. So I'm very happy. So in summary of my review, I essentially said that the X-Pro3 was a beautiful camera made with aesthetic in mind that performed a little better than the X-T3, but certainly had some quirks. Mostly those quirks revolved around the sub-monitor and the hidden LCD, as many of you have kind of come back to me about. Generally, my opinion hasn't changed. I still love the camera, and as soon as I can, I'll be getting a pair of Dura Black ones to replace my X-T3s for my wedding work. Uh, I'll keep my X-T3 for filming and other stuff. The stuff that I love then is still applicable now, and it's just a joy to use, and is, in my mind, a huge leap forward from the X-Pro2. Compared to the X-T3, it's still a leap forward, but not as great, of course, and in essence, that decision is based on which one you or I would prefer to use, and whether features such as classic NEG, minus six EVF, uh, enhanced JPEG options, the OVF, etc., are important to you. Now, I got a whole load of comments in the reviews, and uh, you know, I did a very quick count, and the number exceeded a thousand, which was uh, great. It took a lot of time to go through. Uh, I've tried to take some of those ones that came up the most to try and answer some of those in these videos. Now, before I dig in, I'll be doing another more general Q&A video again soon. I did one a few months back and it was good fun. If you want to leave a question on anything, Fuji, wedding, street, business, or more personal stuff, head over to the community channel on my, uh, sorry, the community tab on my channel and you'll see the question there. Leave a comment in that thread and I'll select as many as possible for that video. Okay, question number one was from Brian Eves and he says, does anyone know if there's a format button shortcut for the X-Pro3? With the X-Pro2, press the delete button and hold it down for three seconds. Then while still pressing the delete button, click in the rear command dial. And the answer is yes, it's still the same. In the X-Pro3, you hold down the drive button, which has the little delete label next to it. For three seconds, then press the rear command dial and you get the format options appear. Carsten Bockerman said, Hi Kevin, you say the OVF has been improved in terms of brightness and clarity. There seems to be a downside though. Its magnification is fixed now and the, comp and the compromise Fuji chose to leave with without frame lines for the 18mm lens, which is my most used and in fact very popular with street photographers. And yep, absolutely, for sure, I feel the OVF has improved in terms of brightness and clarity, but you and many others have correctly established that the frame lines for the 18mm lens are not visible in the OVF anymore, which I agree is actually very disappointing. For the 23mm, they are clear and crisp, but certainly for the 18mm, which I know a lot of street photographers use, this is perhaps a little bit of a back backward step. I do believe that a vast majority of people these days use the EVF though, so because it's so damn good really. But for sure, those that still use the OVF and those wide angle lenses, it looks like this is something we'll have to live with for the time being. I have no idea if this is firmware addressable or if it's a physical parallax issue, but it's true that using a 16mm lens, 18mm lens, the frame lines are not going to be visible in the optical viewfinder. Chris Boland says, thanks for the great overview, Kevin. I swear I read somewhere that the max video recording time went above 30 minutes for the first time. Are you able to confirm this? Thank you. 
Um, you're kind of right, Chris. For HD recording, you can record up to 59 minutes or so, but for 4K, which is really where the sensor shines, you're limited to 15 minutes. And because there's no HDMI out, you can only you can't output to something like a Ninja Fire to record for longer periods. So yeah, a bit of both there, I guess. Gabrielle says, Hi Kevin, I really appreciate you making the effort to put your thoughts in writing and the benefits of the Fujifilm community. Thank you. Do you have any idea if the classic NEG film simulation will be available for previous cameras through a firmware update? Okay, so I reckon I'm asked this at least a gazillion times a day, maybe more. And the answer is, honestly, I really don't know. However, what I would say is that I would be really surprised if classic NEG and the other JPEG goodies in the X-Pro3 were not rolled out to the other cameras with the same sensor. Currently, that's the X-T3 and the X-T30. I'd be really surprised, but impressed, if those features made it to, say, the X100F or the X-H1, as they use different sensors and technology. Now, just this week, there was a firmware update to the X-T3, which mostly focused on video features using a gimbal, etc. A lot of people are complaining that the firmware update hasn't included the classic NEG film simulation. And I guess what you have to realize is the X-Pro3 is still only just hitting the shops in most markets. Uh, the Dura bodies are uh, taking time to get into the shops. It doesn't make much commercial, commercial sense for Fujifilm to roll it out just yet, if indeed they ever do. Now, much as we'd all love it, myself included, I'd love to make movies using the X-T3 with Classic Neg. At the end of the day, Fujifilm have to make money, right? And they would, you know, and, and they would suggest that they would sell less of the X-Pro3s and the X-T3s if it was immediately updated with the features. So, in summary, I don't know if Classic Neg will make it across to the X-T3, but I'd be surprised if it didn't at some point. Okay, Psycho and Mania. Psycho and Mania. Kevin, don't you think it would be a better solution to not have a screen at all on the X-Pro or to have two versions of it? For people who are using the screen to review pictures, the hidden LCD is frustrating as hell. And if Fuji wants to, photographers to focus on shooting and not reviewing pictures, then they should show some guts and do what Leica have done with the MD and the M10D and remove the LCD completely. Being in the middle, having but not having LCD neither justifies Fuji's new philosophy, neither satisfies more, uh, modern regular photographer. Okay. So a lot of the questions were about the LCD and sub-monitor, which of course was the most divisive uh, feature in the X-Pro3. Some of the comments were polite and constructive, like the one from Psychonomania, whatever the name is. Uh, let's just say others were less polite. Anyway, to answer his question, or her question, yes, personally, and I think I mentioned this in my review, I would have been happier with the LCD as it was in the X-Pro2, if I'm totally honest. I don't think having no LCD is an option. I mean, essentially, if you ignore the sub-monitor, that's what you have got with the X-Pro3 with the screen folded up. Have two versions? Yeah, that would be great, but I guess the practicalities of it would make it economically difficult for Fujifilm. I think it's fair to say the X-Pro range doesn't sell as many of the X-T range. So they have, of course, they do. They have to make money off the product first. So yes, the tilting LCD is still a pink elephant in the room, as we say here. Uh, do you have that saying? If not, sorry. It just means kind of the unspoken issue, so to say. Pink elephant. Uh, some people adore it, some people hate it. I like it more than I dislike it, and after using the camera for a while now, I've perfectly gotten used to using it, to the point where it's no longer something I even think about. Okay. Anthony Triana, what about the ability of focusing as far down as minus 6 EV with the X-Pro3 as opposed to the X-T3's 3 EV? Um, now that's a very good question uh, and he goes on to say I might be interested in moving to the X-Pro3 just because of that. Now Anthony makes a very good point here. I mentioned in my uh, review video that the focusing, especially in low light, seems to be even better than the X-T3 even though it's the same sensor. Um, now, this is down in some part to this minus 6 EV. Overall, the camera just seems snappier, sharper, and just a bit better, I guess, in terms of focus acquisition and speed. As I said earlier, though, I really don't know if this will come to the X-T3 in due course. We'll have to wait and see, but I guess it probably will. So, Ruben Zuazana says, uh, is this a paid review? Uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, but thanks for thinking of me, Ruben. You can change that by PayPal donation to kevinmullinsphotography at gmail.com. That would be really lovely. I'll let you know when it comes in, though. Okay, Greg says, how is the Dura finish? Some say uh, it shows a lot of fingerprints and smudges. 
Well, Greg, yeah, I've read that too, and I've tried to take some close-up shots to show you what mine looks like. Uh, honestly, I don't notice fingerprints, but you can see a little bit of grime and dirt buildup. This would wipe off pretty easily, though, I guess. But fingerprints, that's not really an issue. I haven't seen much of that. I think some people are assuming the top plates are like the glass on iPhones or something where you just see sticky marks everywhere. Uh, it's not, and to be totally honest with you, it's not something that would bother me, really, even if it was like that, I guess. Uh, you know, the camera just needs to be a tool rather than an object of looks. Um, you know, hopefully that's answered the question, which has also come up quite a lot. Algarve TV says, the good screen has already been invented before and implemented well in the XA70. You can hide it, show it, or flip it. That's the best screen option I've ever seen, and the sub-monitor could also be part of this design. Why not? Um, yep, I totally agree. The screen in the X XA70 is, oh, the XA70 is fantastic. Uh, I hope we see that style in the X-T4 and all future cameras. Damien Brown says, I'm just wondering what other future models you have discussed with them or even held in your hands, uh, <laughs> given you've had this for so long. Oh, loads, Damien. There's the... Uh, incredible camera. And the Q... Oh, which will blow your mind away. Um, kidding, of course. Jim Bob, it's been a while since I've dug back into X Gear. Can you bracket custom film simulations yet? Custom settings, I should say. Uh, no, Jim Bob, you can't. At least I haven't seen a way of doing it yet. Uh, something a lot of people have asked for, myself included. You can, of course, bracket standard film simulations, but not as far as I know custom settings, um, which is a shame. Hopefully that'll come too. Axel Freeberg, does it have highlight weighted metering like the Ricoh GR3? Uh, Hi Axel, no, it has multi-spot, average and center weighted. I guess spot metering would come closest to highlight weighted in, in that case. Uh, Mick Jansen Photography, how about the diopter? Can you lock it? Uh, yep, yep, you can. <laughs> Simple as that. MPGC, so who is the bloke that advised about the atrocious LCD screen? <laughs> they could have just done away with no LCD. Uh, with that save money, made a larger viewfinder and EVF that could just lower the price cost and maybe just maybe fix that damn battery life. It's almost 2020. Um, okay, so uh, perhaps they could, perhaps they couldn't. We'll never know. But one thing is for sure, uh, there wasn't a bloke in Tokyo who woke up one morning and thought, I know, how can really know, annoy that MPGC guy on YouTube? Um, it, you know, it just doesn't go like that. Honestly, like I say, the LCD is a make or break for some. Others love it. I kind of love my Kia Sportage. My wife doesn't like it so much. As for battery life, I easily get a thousand shots or more from the battery. It just depends on how you use the camera, I guess. And finally, a lovely Christmas message from Christopher Howell. And Christopher Howell says, tell all about the kickbacks you get. Okay, uh, so here we go again. Uh, just like you, Christopher, I have to buy my cameras from Fujifilm. And yes, they do pay me if I want to give a talk at a trade show. Uh, just like they would pay you if, you know, if you put yourself forward for it. Um, so no, no kickbacks. Uh, sorry to disappoint you there. Uh, whether you choose to believe it or not is up to you. But one thing is for sure, I work bloody hard at this content. And it's not at the behest or payment from Fujifilm or anybody else. Uh, oh, hang on a second. Uh, wait, no, you're quite right. I totally forgot. I do get kickbacks. Just got a huge one this morning, in fact. Hang on, I'll get it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, here it is. Look, it's a Fujifilm coffee holder. A Christmas gift from Fujifilm UK. Um, I'll probably sell this and buy a GFX 100 or something, and maybe an X100F, maybe a new car, pay my tax bill maybe. Um, <laughs> okay, so there you have it. A quick update on the X-Pro3. I really love it. You may really love it, or you may not. Uh, I know it's flying off the shelves though. Lots of questions answered, and I hope this video has helped in some way. Now, just before I go, don't forget to head to the community tab on my channel for the next Q&A post. I'll answer as many as I can. Oh, and don't forget the Fujicast podcast. It's basically two mates chatting and answering loads of photography questions, and we have an amazing guest every single week. And finally, and most importantly, my friends, if you're watching this before Christmas, and if you celebrate it, have a wonderful, relaxed, and peaceful time with your friends and family. And I hope 2020 brings you happiness, health, and cheer. Until then, happy snapping, and I'll see you in the next video.